the Peoria Civic Center in Peoria, Illinois. It's the Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week. The Salukis of Southern Illinois take on the Bradley Braves. And with David Kaplan, I'm Dan McLaughlin, and we are socially distant. No fans in the stands, but this is a great contest because it's a huge game for Bradley. They have dropped now six in a row, and they need a win today. Big time, and Dan, they were thought to be one of the teams that would contend at the top of the league. I just had them. They lost a double-digit lead, lost a double overtime at Valparaiso. They need a victory today. So we've got some really good, talented players on the floor here today. Who are you highlighting in our open? Well, if you look for Southern Illinois, the visitor, we're going to start with Lance Jones. It's a guy that can knock down shots from all over the arena, shooting almost 42% from three. Season I, 27 and a win Sunday against Northern Iowa. Seven three-point shots. Plus, he's very good defensively. And then I look at Elijah Childs. It's a guy who was just a man in the double overtime loss at Valparaiso. He needs big baskets, and he delivers big baskets inside, outside, and in transition. Kid can really play, and he's great on the glass. We are set to go. The starting lineups, the opening tip, the Salukis of Southern Illinois, the Bradley Braves. It's Missouri Valley Conference basketball. Away we go. Hoops, cut your way next. It's differently. Wishes can give kids the strength to fight. Da, 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 da. I think we're in a commercial. Jake from State Farm, I knew it. Don't worry, Chris, things are gonna go surprisingly great. Dad, look! <laughs> See, surprising. Just like State Farm surprisingly great rates. I, will, I didn't even record. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. At Drury Hotels, we know life on the road can be hard, but we're here to make the journey easier. With over 150 locations, our friendly team members and generous free amenities, like Wi Fi, hot breakfast, 530 kickback featuring hot food and cold beverages help brighten your day and make your time away from home easier, allowing you to travel happy. Looking for more energy? Better focus and productivity? Time for zeal by Zervita. Check it out. 55 whole food nutrients. Check. Natural clean ingredients. Check. Clinically tested and proven safe and effective. Check. I like Zeal because it keeps me locked in, it keeps me focused, and gives me boost energy. And uh, I just like the tasting of it. Take control of your health and happiness. Feel the zeal today, only with Zervita. The State Farm MVC Men's Basketball Championship is back in the Gateway City this March. It begins here as 10 Valley teams battle it out to advance to the big dance. The 2021 edition of Arch Madness tips off March 4th through 7th at Enterprise Center in downtown St. Louis. Presented by Fox Sports Midwest. Visit archmadness.com or download the Arch Madness app. Since 1907, the Valley runs deep. The Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Zervita. By Prairie Farms. Locally owned, locally produced since 1938. And by Mercy. Your life is our life's work. Cold outside and snow in the forecast, and it should be a good contest here today. With David Kaplan, I'm Dan McLaughlin. It's Missouri Valley Conference basketball. Southern Illinois and Bradley. Carver Arena, the Civic Center here in Peoria, Illinois. Let's take a look at our lineups. A presentation of Prairie Farms, dedicated farmers, happy cows, real milk, Jones, Brown, Verplanken, Devonzo, and Filowich for the Salukis, Kingsby, Nolan Jr., McAdoo, Childs, and Mast for the Bradley Braves. 
Both these teams have had their struggles and stretches in this season. And for Bradley trying to snap a six-game losing skid. As we take a look at our keys to the game made possible by Grinnell Mutual. Trusted tomorrow. Talk to a Grinnell Mutual agent today. Well, Dan, I, for Southern, it's deny confidence. You've got Bradley at home. They've lost six straight. You can't let them get going early. And then Brian Mullins' teams, like he played, like to make jump shots. So move it, move it, move it. Keep the ball moving inside out, side to side. Get the best look. For Bradley, it's a clean slate. You can't change what happened the last six. You can't change the double overtime loss at Valpo when you blew a double-digit lead. Work, don't worry about the past. And then Childs play. That means Elijah Childs. He is a monster inside. This guy, when they need a big basket, he's the go-to guy, and I love watching him play. Bradley in Southern Illinois meeting for the 100th time this afternoon. Series that dates back to 1927. There's a look at Brian Waterl. It helped Bradley end the 31-year drought as the NBC Tournament Champions in 2019. He liked it so much, he did it again in 2020. Yep, Brian Wardle was a heck of a high school player. I watched him play in high school, then he went off to Marquette. Had a really good career. You talk about a guy that could fill it up from deep and to pride defensively. Yeah, if you play for Tom Crane, you know how to play. Sixth season as the Bradley head coach. Opening tip, controlled by the Southern Illinois Salukis. And here we go, Salukis 8-6, 2-6 in the Valley. Bradley showing man-to-man -man as we get this one underway. A look inside, man-to-man -man defense, which you'll see a lot of, but I thought Bradley did a really good job at Valparaiso when they switched to a zone in the second half for a while. Even down the stretch in overtime, they used it. I thought they had a lot of success with it. Nolan picked up the miss, it was Filowich. With that miss, this is Childs. One of your keys to the game. Splashed it down from 12. Well, actually, it hits a couple keys. Get some confidence. Get going early. Don't worry about the pass. And get that guy the basketball. Trent Brown gave it up. Second possession now for the Salukis. Salukis dealing with a major injury. Their top score is out, so they got to find others to try to fill it up. David Kaplan. This is Jones leaning in, no good, tipped around, still tipped around. And a fresh shot clock for the Salukis. They need second chance opportunities. They've gone inside a couple times. It's just to open things up so they can get looks from three because they can shoot the basketball. Deep three, no good. Back up again, and that's no good. Here come the Braves. Deep three here, that's short. Good box out underneath, and the Salukis have it. No second chance opportunity. Yeah, good ball screen there by Childs. Jones kicked it out. Now they go inside. Filowich trying to back in his man. He'll kick it out to the wing. Under 15 on the shot clock. Jones again. Deep three. Yes! 42% from beyond the arc coming into the game at 7 of 11 the other night. This guy can fill it up. It's an early 3-2 lead for the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Here's Childs, the 6'8 senior, the lefty with that sweet stroke. Just off the mark, Mullins wants him to push, and they do. He had a couple of words for the official, said, I got hit. Replankin trying to back in his man. Now they swing it to the right side. This is Brown. He'll go inside to Filowich. Filowich backs in his man with the left hand. Got his own rebound. Kick it back out to Jones. Jones has a seam off the glass. No good. Braves want to run. Good job defensively by Bradley. Lean in, and this will be a foul. And that'll be on the floor. So on the other side, it's Brian Mullins. And how about this, David? He is only 33 years of age. The second youngest head coach in the nation, runner-up for the 2020 Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year. This guy could shoot the ball when he was a player. He went off to Loyola where he was an assistant his family has a long history in the AAU world in Illinois. It helps him get players. 
and he can really coach. One of the nicer guys you'll ever deal with. Childs at the line, 67% free throw shooter. As a team, they shoot 69%. He was part of that great run that they had. Sweet 16 teams, Brian Mullins. And they had some great runs with Bruce Weber and Matt Painter, so on and so forth. And our condolences Illinois. to the family of the late Rich Heron, who I coached against, passed away Christmas Day at 87. Rich Heron put this program back on the map after they had been down a bit. He was a high school coach in Benton and really just a wonderful guy. In fact, Benton has a long storied history of basketball. That's where Doug Collins came from and the actor John Malkovich and the golfer D.A. Wybring. NBC Hall of Famer Rich Aaron and a patch being worn on the jersey of the Salukis all year long to honor the great Rich Aaron. Passed away at the age of 87 on Christmas Day. Kick to the right side, knocked out of bounds, and it'll stay there. The coaching tradition, as you talk about, of the Salukis. Just some really wonderful names that have come through. Jack Hartman, who then went on to Kansas State. When I was coaching, we got to the NCAA tournament and lost to his K-State team. And Rich Heron, Bruce Weber, Matt Painter, Chris Lowry, who's now Bruce's assistant, associate head coach, actually, at Kansas State. And then, of course, now you've got Brian Mullins. Deshaun Henry was wide open underneath. His first bucket of the afternoon. The last four games, Bradley has had four different leading scores. Three up from the right side. But a slow start for Southern Illinois. One of eight from the floor. Yeah, but he with the lead, 6-3. I'm a huge fan. Watch 22 to Sean Henry. It's a young man who really knows how to play. I wrote on my notes here, high basketball IQ. I've watched him play a lot. He is very, very impressive. One of my favorite players to watch uh, in the league. Six six. He's a junior. He comes out of Canada, and he just understands how to play the game. You can watch him and say oh, he's got four points, two points, but watch him pass. Watch him read things and understand how the game goes. He's one of the smarter players in this league. He's out of Saskatoon, Canada. Dembele is into the ball game. Along with Banks for the Salukis. Have you ever been to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan? I have not. And all the Rough Riders game up there? I have not either. Although one Kelly Chase is from that area and his number 22 hangs from the Raptors here is the Peoria Rivermen play hockey when hockey is in session at this particular facility. It is not currently because of COVID-19. We are at the Peoria Civic Center, home to the Bradley Braves. Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week as we step aside. Since 1907, we've been One Valley, breaking down recruitment barriers, hiring coaches to lead our programs, and developing the country's next set of leaders. MVC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mvc-sports.com slash One Valley. Every year, 
Billions of working American families and their children hide their struggle with hunger. It doesn't need to be that way. Hunger hides, but we can help. Let's end hunger in America. Peoria Civic Center, Missouri Valley Conference, game of the week. And Bradley here at home with a five-point lead over the Salukis of Southern Illinois. It's 8-3. What stands out early on, David Kaplan, as you've seen the first couple of minutes here of this one? I think both teams are trying to feel each other out offensively, and I thought the defense has really stepped up and made shots much tougher than you'd normally see, especially in secondary break. Been a rough start for the Salukis with the basketball here. One for nine from the floor. Meanwhile, the Braves are two for four underneath, kicked out. Now swung to the right side. On the block, Tim Belly. And it's now one for ten for the Salukis. That's a tough shot. There's Childs. He missed it. Offensive board inside, but a whistle away for the ball. They're going to get him for an offensive foul. Try to box out underneath. Yeah, they're going to get Henry. I'd love to get another look at that and see if that was a foul or not. Let's take a look again. Okay, there he is inside. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Got him left arm, bridged him in the rib cage, and got him. Good call. Just about five minutes into this one. A little push off, no call. Kick to the corner. Banks, nice look inside, a block. Stayed with it, 15-footer, rattles home. When you get into a situation, Dan, where you start slow, one of eight, one of nine, one of ten, you start to panic, just slow down. Guys, we got an eternity left. Just settle now, run our offense, we'll make shots. There's Henry, had it stripped. And we'll go back the other way. Yeah, Henry trying to dribble through traffic there. Jones, deep three, and knocked it down, and we're tied at eight. Well, that's his second bomb. That was a bomb. That was way downtown. Kick to the corner. They have stepped out of bounds, but they said no. Now the Braves answer with a three of their own, and that's Terry Nolan Jr. Transfer from George Washington. I called his games in the A-10. Very talented score. Very good going to the basket as well. Young man out of Baltimore, Maryland. Kick to the corner, but knocked out of bounds on the baseline. Nolan got a piece of that. Substitution now coming in for the Bradley Braves. Let's take a look here, David Kaplan. Defense to offense. It wasn't that it was a great defensive play. I think he dribbled it off someone's foot. And then Jones just catch, go. Catch, go. When you're a good shooter and you're shooting now almost 43%, and then there's Nolan. He likes to shoot off the dribble. Had an open look, but a lot of guys like to recycle and reset and then power up their three, and that's exactly what he just did. Jones fouled going inside and slow to get up. Teammates helping him up as he's fouled with 11 on the shot clock, and we're about six minutes into this first half as he's holding, looks to be his right hand or wrist, and he is uh, okay. Yeah, Jones a really solid player out of Evanston, Illinois. I grew up five seconds across the street from Evanston. They've always had a good team, always. So Jones will inbound on the baseline, fresh 20 on the shot clock. They'll reset with the offense. Another deep three by Jones, no good. But they've had a lot of second chance opportunities, not this time. Here's McAdoo. Gets a seam, looks underneath, left block, picked up to the corner, three up, three splashed. Rick Mast out of the Netherlands, the red shirt freshman. A big kid who could step out on the floor, had his feet set. Really good job inside to recognize, I don't have a shot here. Rink got to his spot and they found him. It's the second three for the Braves. Up and under, but a travel before it got down. Let's go back to the Bradley three. Well, here's the inside pass. Now, most guys, are, I'm going to shoot this. Really good job to understand where his guy is. Rink mask gets to the corner where he likes to shoot it. 
boom, and he knocks it down. So Southern Illinois is eight points, six from Jones. He's got six of the eight. What has been a poor shooting afternoon thus far, three of 14. Meanwhile, on the other side, four of seven for Bradley, and they have the lead, 14-8. Little seam, finish with the left hand, nicely done. Tabanayan, the sophomore from Helsinki, Finland. I've been to Helsinki. It's a cool city. Yeah. It's a little weird when you're in the summertime and it's sunny at 3 o'clock in the morning. But it's really a beautiful place. Blanken looks inside to Filowich. Kick it to the corner. Good ball movement here by the Salukis. See how Bradley swarming to the ball? I mean, really doing a good job. Late whistle, bailout. Call on Darius Hanna, the freshman out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Let's watch the Braves' defense. They're really moving their feet. Brian Wardle's going to be very happy with the effort. Maybe not always the result, but look at all the white jerseys that get there. And then there's the cut. I'm not sure I saw a foul there, but they got him. First free throw attempt of the afternoon for Southern Illinois. Filowich, a 47% free throw shooter. Had a big win for Drake today as they came from behind down, I believe, nine at the half. One of only three unbeatens right now in college basketball, Division One level. Correct. One of only six all time in Missouri Valley history to start a season 18 and 0. They win it 80 to 77 over Matt Lottick's Valparaiso Crusaders. And Drake is going to be on their way to maybe a Valley Championship and certainly headed to the NCAA Tournament, you would have to assume. You would think so, and I don't think they're the best team in the league. They're very good. I think Loyola, and they play next week, a two-game series. Loyola and Drake will be a war. I can't wait to watch this game. Jones with 11 on the shot clock, too strong. What have you thought of how the Valley has handled this with these two-game series? And these two teams will meet again tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, I love it. I really do. And I think coaches are starting to come around that, you know what? It cuts down on our travel. We get into our hotel. We make it almost a mini bubble. I think it's great. Hannah was bucked. And will they send him to the line? What do you think, David? Or will he... Yeah, they have called on the floor. No, it's got to be a shooting foul. It, it is. He'll shoot two, and we come back. We'll step aside. 11.35 to go in our first half. When you choose Bradley University, you don't have to choose between the activities and resources of a larger university and the personal attention and exceptional learning experiences of a smaller college. With more than 185 undergraduate and graduate programs, small classes taught by engaging faculty in a beautiful 85-acre campus located in the heart of Peoria, Illinois, our side gives you the best of both worlds. Bradley University, mid-size, big difference. It begins here with the 31st chapter of Arch Madness in downtown St. Louis. Stay with your team and watch as 10 Valley schools look to capture the league's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Conveniently located near attractions like the Gateway Arch in Ballpark Village, the team properties plus the tournament headquarters and other Arch Madness hotels offer valley rates to fans wishing to follow their schools all the way to the MVC championship title. Book rooms at these properties for Arch Madness or for your next trip to St. Louis, call 1-800-916-0041 or visit ExploreStLouis.com. You are beautifully unique, unapologetically academic. You're not afraid to color outside the lines, and neither are we. Imagine yourself here in modern labs designed for 21st century students. Drake is a university with a vibrant capital city right next door, where you get a degree that gets employers' attention. This is Drake University, where you will stand out from day one. Learn more at drake.edu.
The score is 16 to 9 in favor of the Braves here at home. Game one of the doubleheader, if you will, against the Salukis this weekend. Our Missouri Valley Conference standings are a presentation of Zervita. Well, look, Loyola's 11 and 1 in the league, 16 and 3 overall. I've had them this year. I'm good friends with their coach, Porter Moser, who I've known since I was a college coach back in the 80s. He gets his guys to really defend. Drake can really shoot it. They're exceptionally good. That two-game series is going to be absolutely awesome. Undefeated teams, when you think about the Valley, well, Drake is right in there at 18-0 after their win today. And Gonzaga, 18-0. Baylor, 17-0. And they were postponed along with Gonzaga. Gonzaga 18 and 0, and Baylor 17 and 0. And Drake, they had a long layoff. They went to Missouri State. They were down by 17 in the first game back. Basically, had one practice with their long layoff, which is about 23 days. Down by 17, second half, and they still come back and win that game. And then the next night. You just knew it, and they win that game, too. On the road at Missouri State, impressive. Two wins that they picked up in Springfield. Yeah, exceptionally impressive. And Look, I've seen all three of those teams. Gonzaga's ridiculous. Baylor's ridiculous. And Drake's record speaks for itself. They're really good. Inside it goes. And with the left hand, it's Vilowich. The Salukis needed that. Yeah, they got a good, clean opportunity for him, and there was no double team on the low post, so he had a chance to utilize his size to get a shot. Three up right in front of the Saluki bench. It's short, stepping out of bounds. It's Kingsby, the senior from Milwaukee. Back to the Salukis. Let's see if somebody else can get things going for Southern Illinois. They are four of 16. Jones with six. Filowich with three. And uh, basically, they got to get something going here, a little rhythm offensively. Yeah, I'm going to run, you know, opportunities inside out to get myself perimeter shots. Here's Jones, and he threw it out of bounds, looking for Filowich. So it's a turnover. See, there I feel like trying to do a little too much. Move the basketball, take it to the short corner. Swing it around, skip it over the top if that's available to you. Inside to the post, kick it back out. Inside to the post, kick it back out. Best way to a clean perimeter look is through the interior. Second turnover charge to Southern Illinois. Total of three in this game. And it off to Kingsby. Picked up his dribble. Now gets it back. Was bumped. It's a good no call, though. He got the ball back. I like letting guys play a little bit. It's physical. It's Division One basketball. McAdoo inside. Well, good job. Like a running back dance, shifting through the lane, picking his spots. The finish inside and the tip. Was Pilowicz with the tip to answer for the Salukis. Nice look. On the right block, too strong. Filowich the rebound. Bradley is made for their last six field goal attempts. Good look. On the right block, kick to the corner. That's Jones. Three up. Banks, too strong. Rebound, Kingsby. Pretty good passing, though, from SIU right there. Pretty good job passing the ball. Stepping out, trying to help was Jones. Whistle for the foul. Let's go back to McAdoo. Watch him like a running back. Pick his spots, make a little cut, and then a little flip off the backboard. That is not an easy shot. How tough do you think this is for these kids right now? No crowd, the cutouts, no band, no cheerleaders. You know, the atmosphere of college basketball. How, how tough do you think this is? I think that's tough, but I think also the other tough thing is School, a lot of it is done remotely. There's no interaction. So basketball becomes really a great safety net to get them some interaction with other people. That's a good point. The struggles continue for the Salukis offensively. Five for 21 to start this game. Kingsby, man to man. All game long for the Salukis. No surprise there from Brian Mullins. Ten on the shot clock. Three up ahead of the key. No. 
The box out underneath, and the rebound to Hannah. Yeah, really nice job by Hannah. The box out on Harvey, and he's he, you got to establish a base, and then use your body. When you slide into the other rebounder, you're going to get caught. Devanzo back in for the Salukis. Stepping out will be McAdoo for Bradley. Bradley 6-0 in bench scoring. The child's too strong there. That's a shot he needs to hit. That's a good look for him. That's the shot that he was hitting down the stretch in the Valparaiso game. There's Banks now with the basketball between the circles. Kicks it to the right side. They want to go on the block. They do. Double team there. Kick out. Oh, and it gets rejected. Childs, really nice job. Watch the block again. Got to read it. You're around the basket. Here he comes. He says, no, 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 no shot. You're not getting an easy lift. And he doesn't fall on top of it. His 24th block of the season to lead the Bradley Braves. Seven on the shot clock. Remember that. Filowich. It's down to two, down to one, has to let it fly, beat the clock, and hits the three. Those are the ones where you work hard, you got the shot clock down, you're like, you got to be kidding me. But you move on to the next one. And the sideline of the Braves, you applaud it. I mean, it's a tough defensive stand, just didn't go your way. Now it's back to the Salukis. They're hanging around. The Saluki three, they beat the clock. And it was the senior who knocked down the three. He knows what the clock says. I gotta get it up. Let it go. Splash. Jake from State Farm. If you here, this must be a State Farm commercial. Sure is. It also means it's about to go down. Oh, don't worry, Chris. Things are gonna go surprisingly great. Uh, I've been doing this for too many years. It, it means something about to go down. Oh no. Here it comes. Jake, protect yourself. Have a nice day. I told you. Surprising. Just like State Farm, surprisingly great rates. Who are you talking to? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. There is a difference between an idea and an idea made real. At UE, we rise boldly to the challenge of making a difference and also dream big about solving the problems of today to better our world for tomorrow. We join together, knowing that side by side, we can truly make a difference. It's what makes us change makers. We step in, we stand out, and we reimagine everything. And it all starts here at the University of Evansville. Come change the world with us. Introducing a hotel carefully crafted to leave a vivid imprint in downtown St. Louis. Designed with an effortless sense of style. Experience the luxury of Hotel St. Louis. Hotel St. Louis, exactly like nothing else. At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. The scoring has been spread out for the Bradley Braves. Seven different Braves have scored, only three different Salukis have scored in this game, and yet it's a four-point lead for the Braves. 7.56 to go in our first half of play, along with the great David Kaplan. I'm Dan McLaughlin in our Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week. Yeah, it's good to be down here. I love working with you. You oh, know yeah. that we've done games for, what, 20 years together? At least. At least. Long, long time. NBC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley Pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit NBC-sports.com slash One Valley. Bradley has not scored the last 223, a 5-0 run 
for SIU. Goes to the left side. Ooh, wide open with the spin. Little 10 footer rattles home for Verplanken Jr. So just like that, the lead is cut to two. So the Salukis, David, just kind of hanging around in this game. It hasn't been pretty offensively, but hanging around. No, because they defend. They defend very well. Childs has missed a couple shots that I thought he would normally hit. That is short. The box out there. And a chance to tie or take the lead for Southern Illinois. Inside, positioning, we're tied. 2020. Really, really good job on that seal by Filowich. Really good job. He got Childs on his hip, catches the pass, and watch how he doesn't put it where anybody can steal it. Soft shot, got it to go. Bradley won for their last seven. Into the hands of Childs. Steps in, couldn't get it to fall. And now a chance to take the lead for Southern Illinois. Childs is pressing a little bit here. Missed three or four shots. I would be surprised if they don't give him a little bit of a rest. Just calm down. Last two Saluki buckets. Nope, they're going to leave him in. Let's see if he could just... Here's a really nice spin move along the baseline. Watch the defender fly by. Settle yourself down. This is the one I like. He's got Childs behind him. You see that Hannah is trying to come back and help. He does not put it on the deck where he could steal it. And he gets the soft shot to go. A chance for the lead. And the rebound to Childs. Here's McAdoo. Little hesitation. Kick it left side. Head of the key. Three. Yep. And no good. Pulled away. There's for Plankin, and they'll reset the offense here. See, when you start, we were talking about starting slow, one of ten. When you start slow, guys start to panic. But when you've got a team that has really good vision and chemistry and a coach who's very positive, you relax. You hit a shot, you hit another shot. You guys, we got all afternoon here. Just relax. We'll be okay. Eric Butler will have a seat here momentarily. Stay tuned for our halftime report, a presentation of State Farm Insurance. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Both teams have had their share of injuries on both sides and really key injuries that have hurt them. And as we talked about at the top of our ball game Bradley right now in a run of six straight losses the Salukis got off to a great start so much so that they knocked off Butler in Butler that Butler I mean that's a massive win for the Salukis yeah, it's the first Butler non-conference loss I think in 10 years at home it was back on December 21st you know who is actually watching the game right now? My dear friend, Mark Silverman, who's half of Waddle and Sylvie up in Chicago, and he is a Southern Illinois grad. Last year when I was doing SIU at Loyola, he came to the game, and now he and his kids, his boys, Mason and Braxton, they are on their couch, excited for the Super Bowl, but first, they're watching this. Sylvie is a cancer survivor. He is a beast and a diehard Saluki fan, loves Saluki basketball, went to school there, as I said, and is one of the best broadcasters the city of Chicago's ever seen. So, Sylvie, proud of your spirit, your fight. Just keep killing it, man. So boys, do what your dad says. Trent Brown, one of two from the free throw line, and the Salukis have the lead. Put on the floor by Kingsby. And the flush of the pickup by Henry. Really nice pass because Kingsby got caught. And usually when you leave your feet, you better know what you're going to do with the basketball. And really good job by Henry. Get to the basket and finish it. That was the first bucket for Bradley in the last six minutes. It had been a 10-0 run. The first lead since 3-2, by the way, for Southern Illinois. So there's Henry, gets the dunk, and then at the other end, he gets caught trying to prevent 
a post up, gets caught with the foul, and that's his second foul. So he'll take a seat. He is the leading MVC scorer off the bench, and I told you, that's not the best thing he does. He can score. He has a very high basketball IQ. So Luki's a 70% free throw shooting team. Devenzo, a senior, 71% this season coming into play. And with that, we're tied at 22, 439 to go. Short, and the rebound to Mast. It's a good rivalry. It's a good game. Three up and splashed on the left side by Rink Mast. Well, the pride and joy of the Netherlands. That's his second three, and both have come on the left side of the court. I've watched this kid a lot. He likes to shoot on the left side of the court or at the top of the key. Inside, couldn't finish. Three men were on him. Now Bradley wants to run. They pull back and want to set the offense up. McAdoo with it. 15 on the shot clock. Mass sets the pick. Gets it back. He'll try the three. There it is again left side, but this time no good. And the rebound to Verblanken. Rink Mass, 6'9", 240. Just a redshirt freshman. And you see how he steps out and shoots. Wait till he gets a lot of time in the weight room. Jones, long three, and buries it. That's his third. It's seven the other night. Seven of 11. And he's got three tonight. Three of four. I'll tell you what, partner, uh, two of those three have been NBA range, too. Big time. <laughs> There's McAdoo. We're tied at 25, under three to play. First half, kicked out. Six on the shot clock. McAdoo for three. Drew Iron, but no second chance opportunities. That's been a storyline here in this game. No second chance opportunities for Bradley and the rebounding edge for the Salukis, despite the fact, hey, despite the fact that they did not get off to a very good start shooting the basketball. No question. Here you sit 25, 25, and you get your heart off it, guys. We're good. We'll settle down. Let's get a good shot. There's the ball movement. You can't leave that guy open. Splash. engineering technology, aviation, public health, business, and 100 other majors. Blue is a four-year graduation guarantee. Blue is filled with researchers, scholars, explorers, creators. Blue is commended by Forbes and the Princeton Review. Blue is 150 years of sycamores making the world bolder, healthier, greener, wiser, better. Blue is Indiana State University. There's more to Blue. They are the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. But what does it take to strengthen our service members? What does it take to let them know that we stand behind them, wherever they are? What does it take to bridge the distance and keep them connected to family, home, and country and what does it take to prepare them for their future when their service to the nation is complete what does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world it takes a force be a force behind the forces share a message today at force.uso.org
It's 25 all, Bradley and Southern Illinois with 2.41 to go in our first half. It's the MVC game of the week. When the Missouri Valley Conference Television Network crew travels to campus, it considers these properties home. These hotels consistently support the conference and its 10 member institutions. So please call or visit the websites of these properties when making plans to follow your favorite team away from home. Along with David Kaplan, I'm Dan McLaughlin, and we're at the Peoria Civic Center in Peoria, Illinois. Great to have you with us. Southern Illinois and Bradley, give me your thoughts so far. We got 2.41 to go, just uh, this first half of play. Uh, as we were talking before we went to break, Southern Illinois has got to be feeling really good. Guys, we're good. One of ten, they got off to a pretty good start. Talking about Bradley shooting the basketball, and we're tied at 25. Take care of the ball. Make the extra pass. We'll keep making shots. And if you're Bradley, you're very happy with what you've seen defensively in large part. They got to do a better job getting the ball inside and converting. They need Childs to get going. Her play can hit that three as Bradley came out in a different look defensively, a little zone look, and they adjusted quickly. On the other side, it's Kingsby. He's fouled. He'll shoot a pair. Yep, they came out in the zone that they used very effectively against Valparaiso. And, you know, the coaches sit and watch a ton of tape. And so Brian Wardle watches the Valpo tape and says, oh, we gave that game away. We lost a double overtime. But the zone worked. Let's see what we can do against Southern. But Southern shoots the ball better than Valparaiso. Bradley is perfect from the line today. Six for six. As Kingsby, an 83% free throw shooter, hits the first. Bradley coming into this game 3-7 and seven in conference play, 9-10 and ten overall. Saluki's 2-6 in the conference, 8-6 and six overall. And the Braves stay perfect from the line. Substitution, McAdoo, the junior out of Pontiac, Michigan, back in the game. You know, you wonder sometimes, I've seen teams that will shoot 60% from the line, and it drives you nuts. So you go to practice. Guys, we're going to shoot in the middle of drills. You're exhausted. Make your free throws. Guys, we're going to shoot. You want to get out of here and not run sprints? Okay, we got to make X number of free throws. You try everything. And then there are times you don't even practice them, and you make shots. And you're thinking, guys, what's going on here? Inside it goes. Filowicz to the corner. Three up right side. Short. No second chance opportunity. Nolan Jr. with it. Nice lead pass. The catch. Falling out of bounds. He's pushed out of bounds. Yeah. Yep. They're absolutely going to get, I think, let's see who they end up calling that out. Is it going to go on Diavanzo? Yeah. Yeah. There's the pass inside. I don't know about that. Devonzo's looking, going, are you kidding me? I don't know. I just think... I thought his when, momentum just took him out of bounds. Yeah, when you're a passer, you have to ask yourself the question. Who am I throwing it to? And if he catches it, what can he do with it? He got Childs on the move. He's a big man. He's 6'6", 200 plus pounds. You don't just stop on a dime. And Bradley is now 10 for 10 from the free throw line. So 140 to go. First half of play, Bradley on top by point. Jones matched up with Nolan. Jones going right at him, lost the handle, and they turn it over. No argument there from Jones, just runs back the other way. Southern Illinois returns 42% of their points, 34% of their rebounds, and 52% of their assists. So while they're a young team with a coach only in his second year, they've got some experience. Child found him. Yep, they're going to get him. That's easy call. It's going to be interesting, too. When you got a guy like Childs and you're the coaching staff on Bradley's side, and, and to your point, I, I, yeah, there's some experience coming back with Southern Illinois, and they're going to get better and better. But if you're Bradley, does Childs come back? Because of COVID-19, these seniors are going to have the, the loophole this Correct. year. You know, do you, do you come back? 
That's a that's a good player to have come back. Oh man, if you get a guy like that in his fifth year, right? It's tough. It's you know, it's funny. You use a football analogy. Sometimes I watch BYU play on that late Saturday night game, and they've got guys who leave for two years on a Mormon mission. All of a sudden, you've got an offensive lineman who's 25 years old against a D lineman who might be 18. That's right. It's an amazing advantage. Bad pass. So they turn it over. Fourth turnover charge to Bradley. So Lukey's have turned it over three times. Get out of bounds. It'll stay with Southern Illinois. Bench point still 8-0 in favor of the Bradley Braves. 19 on the shot clock. 52.7 to go in our first half of play as Jones will take it underneath on the baseline. Brian Mullins can play, man. When that guy got a clean look, he can play. Yep. Some good teams with the Salukis. Sweet 16 teams. Put on the floor by Brown. A little ball fake by Jones. Goes to the left side. Taken there by Banks. He's spinning. Kick it out to Brown. Steps in. Drew Iron, no good. Rebound to Tavanian. And a timeout taken. So Bradley wants the timeout. There's a difference of about 1.9 seconds game clock, shot clock. So they essentially can play here, partner, for that final shot. No question. Come down and just get the right shot. You know, end of half is different than end of game because you still got 20 more minutes to play. So you're not worried so much about, oh boy, let's run it down, get the last shot. And if we don't make it, we go to overtime. Here, it's the end of the half. Just get the best look. About eight seconds, start to make your move. Take me in that huddle on both sides. What are you doing here if you're Brian Mullins? Well, look, I might bring some kind of a different defensive look. Just something. So that if you're looking at the other team, you say, you know what? Hold on a second. What are they running there? And you watch the clock drip, and everybody starts to get helter skelter. So let's see how this all shakes out. You got Tabanainen is going to throw the ball in, and then see if Bradley can get themselves a good clean look. I would probably put the ball in Terry Nolan's hands, and. Let's wait. Let's get the shot down. The clock down to about eight seconds, and then make a move. McAdoo, not a Nolan. There you go. You're at eight. Now you got to start attacking. And one counted, no doubt about it. And one made a move right at eight seconds. That's usually standard for most coaches. Some might go to seven, and he makes a really nice move. Defender has no chance to get there in time. Pass over the top, slide over. There's the hit, there's the hoop. Three-point opportunity. Really good, fortuitous play by Bradley. Send the young man from Helsinki, Finland, to the line. You should visit over there, Dan. I think you'd enjoy it. I love going to Europe. I haven't given it much thought here in the last year or so. No, <laughs> many have not. <laughs> <laughs> and he completes it. So, you know, you got 6.3 to go here. Plenty of time, and this is the guy who should have the ball in his hands, Jones. So here's Jones. Let's it fly. Got it. Oh, what a deep three. Are you kidding wow. me? Beats the clock and buries the three. Did you see where that was from? Watch where he rises up from. My goodness. Okay, the clock is ticking down. He lets it go. He's got 2.2 left when he raises up to shoot it. He easily has three more dribbles in him. But that's confidence, man. That is a guy who knows I can make that shot. So Jones, three of seven from the floor, and all three from behind the arc. As he beat the clock, it pulls Southern Illinois within one. 20 minutes in the books, the Missouri Valley Conference. Game of the week, Bradley, 32, the Salukis, 31. Loyola University, Chicago. 
sharpening minds through justice and faith. We champion humanity, humility, and heart. Crafting a sustainable future with lessons that transcend the classroom tomorrows. It's by trailblazing through today's troubles that we advance our tomorrow. No action too big or too small in creating the world we wish to see. Set change in motion. The call starts now. This world is full of opportunities. Chances, dares, windows that open to greatness for tomorrow's workforce. It all matters. The future is coming. Tomorrow's leaders are ready to make their statement today. Who are they? Here come the bears. This is cellulose acetate, a plant-based material that's not only extremely durable, but also quite flexible, making it ideal for Warby Parker glasses, which, by the way, start at $95, including prescription lenses. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Oh yeah, about those prescription lenses. Warby Parker glasses come standard with custom-cut polycarbonate lenses that have been treated with scratch-resistant and anti-reflective coatings. Nice. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Indiana State tussles with Northern Iowa Sunday on Fox Sports Midwest Plus. The Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Zervita. By Prairie Farms. Locally owned, locally produced since 1938. And by mercy, your life is our life's work. We're at the Peoria Civic Center in the Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week. It's 32-31 in favor of Bradley. Welcome back to our halftime report, a presentation of State Farm Insurance. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A look at our first half highlights made possible by Hotel St. Louis where historic meets hip. What stood out for you, David Kaplan? That guy right there, the pride and joy of Evanston, Illinois. I mean, he just believes every shot's going in, and more often than not, it does. It's up to almost 44% from three. And look at this one at the end of the half. I mean, he had plenty of time to get two, three more dribbles. He just raises up, boom, and drills it. And then top of the item is just a real solid, heady, tough player. Makes the move here along the baseline late in the first half, takes the hit. Oop, harm, three-point play. And so while both teams have gone cold at times from the floor, Danny, got a heck of a ball game. 32-31 in this rivalry. Looking forward to the second half. Looking forward to it. 29-28, Bradley at home with a one-point lead. Jumped out to a big, sizable lead early, but the Salukis hung around. More coming up. At the University of Northern Iowa, great opportunities begin with personal connections. Connections with fellow students, staff, and faculty that make you feel like your voice is heard, and it's making a difference. Our faculty makes your learning their highest priority. They're helping you explore your passions in and out of the classroom, creating the real world experiences that put you ahead of the competition. Discover where you belong at the University of Northern Iowa. At Curry Hotels, we know life on the road can be hard, but we're here to make the journey easier. With over 150 locations, our friendly team members and generous free amenities, like Wi-Fi, hot breakfast, 5.30 kickback featuring hot food and cold beverages help brighten your day and make your time away from home easier, allowing you to travel happy. 
It's our turn to shake things up and make some noise. Our turn to spread our wings and chart a new course. It's our turn to build new bridges and go off the beaten path. Our turn to raise our voice and make some waves. It's our passion, our calling, our future. And now, it's our turn. At touchofmodern.com, we always surprise, excite, inspire. Because our expertly curated products are never ordinary, never mundane, and never in a million years what you'd expect to see or imagine you'd ever have. Here's to the thrill of discovering the next exceptional and unexpected product. Check it all out at touchofmodern.com. Welcome back to our Halftime Report, a presentation of State Farm Insurance. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. It's time for today's profile, made possible by the Drury Plaza Hotel at the Arch. NBC correspondent Dave Snell takes a look at Braves junior forward Ari Boyov. At 7-1, Ari Boya is the tallest player ever to wear a Bradley Braves uniform. The Douala Cameroon native is not only a force on the floor, but in the classroom. A winner of the Missouri Valley Conference Elite 17 and Commissioner's Academic Award, a member of the Valley Honor Roll in his first two seasons, and three-time Athletic Director Honor Roller at Bradley. This French and International Studies major makes an impact in everything he does. I was really excited to come, but uh, I was a little bit uh, scared about the school. Because with the, the language barrier, I was like, I don't know if I would make it, but maybe I will have to to uh, do more work to uh, to start a little bit learning and understanding better English because I was adding too much time in high school. He looked at me like his big brother because, you know, when he came in here, he couldn't speak a lot. Like, he don't like to talk a lot, so he... The only time you'll see Ari just outgoing is when he's talking to me. So I think that's, you know, that helped me also to, you know, to get into him and teach him some stuff that Coach Juan or Coach Juan, uh, you know, see from him and stuff like that. So we help each other in, two, like, in a lot of different ways. As a human being, I mean, he's always been a big hearted, great guy, but I mean, he's just really matured. Uh, he's just a lot more confident in who he is, um, talking with him. Um, Oh, he's opening up every year. He's opened up more to the group, um, kind of came in and very shy and, and guarded a little bit. But now he's just open and confident about who he is and, and what he stands for as a person. So that's great to see. Second in the Valley last season in swatting shots. This year may be a bubble for everyone that plays the college game. But for Ari, every time he's on the floor, it's a block party. For the Missouri Valley Conference, this is Dave Snell. Today's profile is made possible by the Drury Plaza Hotel at the Arch, which reminds you to travel happy. This is halftime. The NBC game of the week, Southern Illinois, the Bradley Braves, and we've got more. It's halftime coming up. The Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Championship returns to the Quad Cities this March. Watch as 10 Valley teams try to punch their ticket for the NCAA Tournament. The 2021 edition of Hoops in the Heartland tips off March 11th through 14th at Tax Slayer Center in downtown Moline. Visit mbcquadcities.com or download the Hoops in the Heartland app for more information. Since 1907, the Valley runs deep. What is passion? At Valpo, it's something that pours out of us uncontrollably. It's a late night shot of caffeine, cramming for finals, a jam session with friends. It sees deep into space, turns big stuff into small potatoes, floats boats and floods the senses. Passion is alive, it has a heartbeat, and it lives in you. How do we know? Because at Valpo, passion is who we are. 
I'm Kathy Cutis. Many funeral homes mandate sales quotas for their funeral directors, and this translates into pressure. At Cutis, there are never quotas, absolutely no pressure, and you make all the decisions. Cutis Funeral Home, affordability with dignity since 1910. We hear the stories of people whose lives have been left hanging by a thread. Or whose worlds have been blasted apart. And whether it's care or community that people need, we're here to help them live a new chapter. Be a lifeline to the most vulnerable. Hello, I'm Kim Cutis. And I'm here to personally guarantee you, you will never find a pressurized sales pitch at Cutis Funeral Home. Our funeral directors answer your questions and you make all the decisions. Cutis Funeral Home, affordability with dignity since 1910. Yes, sir, 32-31. The Bradley Braves leading the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Welcome back to our halftime report. A presentation of State Farm Insurance. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Let's take a look at our first half stats. And what stands out for you, partner? Uh, Southern Illinois was able to get six three-pointers to go down. They started again one of ten. One of ten. And seven second-chance points off of six offensive rebounds. They started slow in that category as well. And then look at bench points, though. Both teams shooting poorly, under 40%, but 11 nothing in bench points, pretty good. That's David Kaplan of the Emma Lachlan. It's the Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week. Bradley at home, leading 32-31. The start of the second half, 20 minutes to go. Come join next. <laughs> It begins here with the 31st chapter of Arch Madness in downtown St. Louis. Stay with your team and watch as 10 Valley schools look to capture the league's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Conveniently located near attractions like the Gateway Arch in Ballpark Village, the team properties plus the tournament headquarters and other Arch Madness hotels offer valley rates to fans wishing to follow their schools all the way to the MDC championship title. Book rooms at these properties for Arch Madness or for your next trip to St. Louis, call 1-800-916-0041 or visit ExploreStLouis.com. Stir is the new free TV. 100%. We've got live local news. Breaking news out of Columbia. And local shows. That's true. With over 120 channels and 8,000 hours of TV shows and movies, we've got you covered. Nice and present. Survey set. Yeah! That is incredible. You want it? We got it. Bingo. Amazing. From your local TV station, it's Stir, the new free TV. The Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Zervita. By Prairie Farms. Locally owned, locally produced since 1938. And by Mercy. Your life is our life's work. Peoria Civic Center, home to the Bradley Braves, Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week. It's 32-31, Bradley leading Southern Illinois. Dan McLaughlin alongside David Kaplan. Just about set to go for the start of the second half of play. 
Really looking forward to the finish of this one. Also really looking forward to next weekend, Drake, Loyola. Drake, if you missed it, they are still undefeated as they, uh, I guess you want to say, squeaked out another win. They are undefeated yet in the Valley. And those are two teams you would have to say that they right now are in the driver's seat to maybe have a Valley Championship, but two teams that certainly, no matter how it shakes out, should be headed to the NCAA tournament. No question. Uh, if you told me I had to pick a winner, I'd pick Loyola. But Drake's really, really good. I think it's going to be a fabulous two-game series. The first possession of our second half, it goes to Bradley and a quick foul. And that's going to go against Lance Jones. And then big three right before the final buzzer of our first half. No, I think they're actually going to switch at the fillage. I think they're going to get him on a bump. And that's indeed what they did. And with that, Filowich will have a seat. Boy, that's not what you want. Just nine seconds into the first half, he picks up his third personal. Yeah, trying to deny Elijah Childs the opportunity to post. There's Nolan. They'll swing it to the left side. Kingsby. Same starting five on both sides. Three up and splashed home. That's Childs. Yeah, he struggled in the first half offensively. He just did. And I guarantee you, as a leader, as a senior, he said, guys, get me the basketball early. I'm ready. Let's go. He knocks down a three. If you're wondering about foul trouble, that was the third for Filowich and Henry with three for Bradley. It's Trent Brown. Kicks it out. They're planking. Four on the shot clock. Kick to the corner. It's short. Would have been a shot clock violation. Picked up, going the other way. Kingsby. Kind of a similar start to the game. A little bit more jump, it seems like, with Bradley. Good ball movement, wide open, three, and knocked down. That's Terry Nolan Jr., and quickly a timeout taken by the Salukis. Well, watch the pass to the short corner. It's one of the great weapons. Teams always go to one side. Got to go the other side. Look at the short spot, the corner. Take it to the short corner. Inside, out, ditch. Nobody there. Did you hear that? Stay farm thing. Da -da 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 -da. I think we had a commercial. Jake from State Farm, I knew it. Don't worry, Chris. Things are gonna go surprisingly great. Dad, look! You see? Surprising. Just like State Farm's surprisingly great rates. I, w I didn't even record. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Looking for more energy? Better focus and productivity? Time for Zeal by Zervita. Check it out. 55 whole food nutrients. Check. Natural clean ingredients. Check. Clinically tested and proven safe and effective. Check. I like Zeal because it keeps me locked in, it keeps me focused and gives me boost energy. And uh, I just like the tasting of it. Take control of your health and happiness. Feel the Zeal today. Only with Zervita. Introducing a hotel carefully crafted to leave a vivid imprint in downtown St. Louis. Designed with an effortless sense of style. Experience the luxury of Hotel St. Louis. Hotel St. Louis, exactly like nothing else. Today's NBC legend is Bradley's Chet Walker, a native of Benton Harbor, Michigan. The Jet finished as Bradley's all-time leading scorer and rebounder and led the Braves to two trips to the National Invitation Tournament and a 1960 NIT Championship. Walker enjoyed a 13-year professional career with the Syracuse Nationals, Philadelphia 76ers, and the Chicago Bulls. The 2021 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship returns to Enterprise Center March 4th through the 7th in downtown St. Louis, not too far away. Local seating capacity restrictions will apply for this year's event. For more information, be sure to download the Arch Madness app. 
or visit archmadness.com for details. Danny, I got a, a text from my friend Danny Driscoll, who is a restaurant tour in the Chicago area, but his dad, Leo, has been a season ticket holder for almost 30 years for Southern Illinois. And he said, growing up, we always went to the games. Now, Danny lives in Chicago, but his dad, Leo, went to school where Walt Frazier was a Saluki. And he is a huge Southern Illinois fan. So, Leo Driscoll, enjoy the game and go Salukis for you. Devento puts it in. It breaks that little run put together to start the 6-0 run for Bradley to start here in the second half. Just about two minutes in. But the Peoria Civic Center, and they're going to call that on the floor. Brian Mullins, frustration on the far sideline, the 33-year-old head coach of the Salukis. You knew when you watched him play, he was going to be a coach. You just knew his family background, big in the AAU world, and he's just a really good guy to deal with. And you watched him play, and you thought, okay, he's not an NBA player, but he's going to be a really good coach. Unselfish kick to the corner, and splash down the sophomore, Ben Harvey. Young man out of Jonesboro, Arkansas, knocks down that three. So the timeout, taken at the right time, answering on the other end, it's Terry Nolan Jr. drawing contact in the foul. As I said in the first half, Ter Terry was a very good player at George Washington and very aggressive. Now watch the three. Just find the open man. Look how quick the pass was. He knew if I get the ball, I've got a bigger man next to me. I'm not going to try and score over a bigger guy. I got a guy in the corner who's got his feet set, his shoulders over his toes. It's just catch it, load it up, let's go. Terry Nolan Jr. at the line, hits it both. Bradley's been knocking down those free throws. They are perfect from the line. One, two, two. A little nuisance press. I wouldn't call it, you know, something trying to really get steals. Just trying to take you out of your rhythm. But Bradley, 13 for 13 from the free throw line. On the other side, Saluki's three of seven. Three up and knocked down. Good no call. Good no call. There was not a charge there. And again, Dan, the last two threes, where have they come from? Inside, out. It's the eighth three, by the way, hit by the Salukis, and Bradley answers with a three of their own. Just what they needed. Settle now. We got to get a bucket here, and the big guy, Child, second straight from three. 43-39 as we go back and forth. A little rhythm now to the start of this second half. Contact. A whistle and a foul on McAdoo. Yep, McAdoo is a kid who was a transfer from Eastern Michigan. I uh, grew up in Pontiac, Michigan. Gives you some veteran leadership. He's a junior guard. Has been sidelined back today. Teams have already combined for five threes this half already. Substitution for Bradley. Darius Hanna is back in the game. Delay Tava Nainen back in the game. At the goal, contact, they let him play. There's Childs. Left side, three up and no good. Tipped out of bounds, and it stays with the Braves. 16.44 to go. A fresh 20 on the shot clock. Henry to inbound. There's Terry Nolan. Tough shot inside the arc. Well, that was a tough shot. That was. He was trying to see if he could turn the corner and take it down the lane when all right, defenders there. Just a fallback. Jones hands it off. Now it goes to Harvey. Jones sees a lane, one on four, kick it out, good ball movement here. Good recovery by the Braves defensively. Jones in the lane and threw it away. And that's a poor decision there. Jones thought he could make a move inside and then had to get rid of it. And that's a tough pass to complete. Hesitation by Nolan. Oh, what a move. 
But it's four straight for Terry Nolan. He likes taking the ball inside. He'll shoot it, but he loves to attack. Lead is jumped to eight. Bradley has not missed a shot this half. Trying to extend this lead to double digits. Three out. No good. That was a good look. Child did a really good job. Take it inside, kick it back out. And they got a pretty good look. And Jones lost the handle. And they hand it right over. Again there. I didn't have a problem with the decision by Childs. I think it was Terry Nolan that stumbled. Maybe a travel, and it is. We're blanking with the travel. Take a look at Nolan. To the break. It's the Terry Nolan show right now. Watch this shot. That is a tough fall back jumper. Bottom of the net. The State Farm MVC Men's Basketball Championship is back in the Gateway City this March. It begins here as 10 Valley teams battle it out to advance to the big dance. The 2021 edition of Arch Madness tips off March 4th through 7th at Enterprise Center in downtown St. Louis. Presented by Fox Sports Midwest. Visit archmadness.com or download the Arch Madness app. Since 1907, the Valley runs deep. Today's NBC Hall of Famer is Southern Illinois' Walt Frazier, a native of Atlanta, Georgia. Frazier was a two-time All-American and inducted into the Conference's Athletic Hall of Fame in 2000. A 1967 first-round draft pick of New York, he led the Knicks to two championships and was enshrined into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 1987. There are oceans and rocks. Places where fish swim and birds fly, where mountains spring up and trees and grass grow all around. History is made, art is created, things happen that should always be remembered. Heroes emerge, a woman sets people free, a man makes life, a leader steps forward. People get together, they help each other out, they make their own places to run and play and contemplate the universe. There's pride and gratitude and fun. It belongs to everyone. It can be a place, a feeling, a state of mind. So get up, get out there and find your part. Indiana State tussles with Northern Iowa Sunday on Fox Sports Midwest Plus. A look around the valley is presented by Grinnell Mutual Insurance. Trust in tomorrow. Talk to a Grinnell Mutual agent today in the big game. Drink over Valparaiso 8077. Some finals already done today and uh, the game that we look forward to, Indiana State and Northern Iowa. So, as we mentioned earlier, and it will be the talk of the Valley leading into next weekend, Drake and Loyola. Looking forward to that. It should be a wonderful, wonderful two-game series. So the standings updated. Drake undefeated, undefeated overall at 18-0. And, 0. and uh, Loyola, 11-1 in conference play, 16-3 overall. Again, those two hooking up next weekend. And for me, those two should already have punched their tickets. They are among the best teams in the country. And that's, bar, you can't bar, bar. call yourself a student of college basketball. Watch those two teams play going out of ball. So I'm just telling you, it's going to be a great series. Filowich is back in with three fouls. And when he was out, is a 15-8 run for Bradley. So he's back in. Brown with the basketball for the Salukis. Spinning. And then hands it off. Under 15 on the shot clock. Oh, pass. And a foul underneath. 
Terry Nolan, literally on backside support. He comes along the baseline and he got a piece of the arm of Filovich. And he was just a click late. Do you like the way the game has evolved? Pro, college, even high school now. The three point shot is so much more of a weapon than it was even five years ago. No doubt. Get you back into a game immediately, too. But it can shoot you out of a game if you settle too quickly. That's true, too. I was talking to the legendary Jonathan Hood, who's one of the great college and high school announcers that our city's ever seen up in Chicago. Does a ton of college basketball, covers the NBA. He loves the advent of the three, but he said, you also still have to be able to show you can score inside. You can't settle. Inside the yard, Fidelich came out, had a hand up, and the rebound to Dalton Banks, the freshman from Wisconsin. Used to be when you went recruiting when I was coaching. Three smashed down by Verplanken. Got a nice open look. First thing you looked at is, can that guy play athletically? That's not the first thing you look at. Now, once you know the character is good, can that guy make jump shots for you? They announce with a three. That's Kingsby. Boy, three's draining both sides here in the second half. Bradley got their lead back up to seven. Seven threes hit by Bradley. Nine on the other side. How about another three? Why not? What a pass that was to find the open man. The three hit by Trent Brown. Yeah, I want to, when we get a stop, I want to show you why that shot was there. Can they answer? No. Loose, kept alive. Pinballed around and Terry Nolan. Under 10 on the shot clock. Nolan with it. Good call screen. Nolan on the baseline, tough shot. And the rebound, Filowicz. Hannah had a really good screen that gave them a chance to make a play there. Lead at four. To the right side, Banks with it. Now Harvey. Inside. The freshman banging inside, using that left hand, no good. Rebound, Hannah. Just over 12 to play. From the Peoria Civic Center, home to the Bradley Braves. The Missouri Valley Conference game of the week, Bradley and Southern Illinois. Bradley trying to snap a six-game losing skid. Tough screen out top, Brown trying to figure out where he is. He got the ball, leads his man, and an easy two. Then Harvey on the receiving end, and a timeout taken by the Bradley Braves, and the lead is cut to two. Shifting tides ebb and flow. Boy, you get a seven-point lead, right back to two. And here's a really good finish. Good pass down the court, and just finish it at the rim. Since 1907, we've been one valley, breaking down recruitment barriers, hiring coaches to lead our programs, and developing the country's next set of leaders. MVC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mvc-sports.com slash one valley. Thank you.
Today's Countdown to Arch Madness features the 2006 title game matchup between Bradley and Southern Illinois. Trailing the Braves by a point at halftime, SIU rode the second half play of turning MVP Randall Falker, who had 17 points and 16 rebounds in a Saluki 59-46 victory. Be a part of the 31st edition of Arch Madness at Enterprise Center in St. Louis on March 4th through 7th. For more information, visit archmadness.com. Eighteen Final Four trips. Nine National Players of the Year. Legendary coaches and players. An iconic postseason tournament. The Valley runs deep. Two-point lead for Bradley, and along with David Kaplan, I'm Dan McLaughlin. It's been a good ball game, and uh, partner, you're saying it's a game of runs, and we certainly have had that in this game. We have. I look at, you know, the numbers, and, you know, you look at everything, and you see there's our, my guy, Terry Nolan, who I've watched his entire career. He is a true scholar athlete. Look at that GPA. Look at the points per game, the assists per game, and he wants to take big shots in big spots. He is our NBC scholar athlete of the game, presented by State Farm. Junior guard from Baltimore, Maryland, averages about 11 a game transfer from george washington 37 the gpa in public relations and when you want the real deal like a good neighbor state farm is there so a game of runs here between these two so bradley opens the half five out of six siu scoreless in over two minutes three turnovers bradley on a 7-0 run now a 5-0 run siu bradley scoreless for the last two plus minutes it's like you get a lead or you make a run and the other team answers McAdoo Childs back in the game along with Kingsby there's Henry double coming kicked out and did they turn it over yes. now they're gonna say they got a piece of this it's down to two on the shot clock. Let it fly. Oh, he almost banked it in. And a fresh 20 on the shot clock. I did not think that ball was tipped, nor did he's still barking Brian Mullins. He thought that was easily a turtle. Yeah, he's over there shaking his head. He didn't like that call one bit. The tip no good. Offensive board. Put back is good. And Sean Henry. And it's a four-point lead for the Bradley Braves. Oh, right through the defense, knifing through for Blanket. For Blanket, we've seen him hit a three. Now he takes it inside, slithers his way to the basket. Kingsby gets it back. Uh, they're going to say offensive foul. That's four on Henry. On Henry. Yep. It's almost as if it's a make good. So I didn't see that either, did you? I did not. Henry's looking, going, you've got to be kidding me. He can't get in any kind of rhythm. He gets in. Foul. Oh. So under 10 and a half to play in the lead of two. A chance to tie or take the lead here for the Salukis. Bradley, 4 nothing on the offensive glass this half. Here's Banks spinning. And we are tied. There you go. It's a seven-point lead. You blink. It goes from 50 to 43. We're tied at 52. Inside a push. DeVenzo called for the foul. Henry had four fouls in five minute period and six points. This is just a really sweet move. That is a tough, tough move to take Kings B inside and score like that. There's Childs. One on one. That's with his right hand. That's the offhand for him. 
That is a man's basket. That is, we need a hoop. Get me the ball and get out of my way. And Bradley back on top by two. That's what he did, Danny, in the Valpo game where they found themselves you know, struggling down the stretch. And he had an incredible shot with four tenths of a second left to force the second overtime. Well, Southern, they turn it over here, but they've been shooting much better here in the second half, around 67%. Remember, they shot 35% in the first half, almost turned over. Saved there by McAdoo. Just over nine to go. Kingsby. There's a seal inside. Help side defense. Filowich, it looks like, is going to pick up his fourth foul. And indeed it will be. Again, we've seen it with Terry Nolan. We're seeing it here. Guys have got to be quicker if your responsibility is backside help on a toss over the top. Filowich here. This is his responsibility. Got to read it. See, he's just a little late. No doubt about the foul. You have to come off your man another step or two so you have the space to get to the baseline and be there. Period. Remember when Filowich was out. That's when Bradley, you talk about runs. That's when they were able to separate. He came back in. Southern Illinois came right back in. And now he's out. We'll see if they can keep from looking up and going, oh, we're seven down yeah. again. Under nine to play. McAdoo with it. Leans in. Blocked. Really good defense. I think that was Harvey. Really, really good. What a spin move. Oh, what a finish at the goal by Harvey. That is pretty. Childs with the pick. Handed off to Terry Nolan. Got it back. We're tied. 54. Childs. And he is fouled. Take a look at the block and then the bucket tied at 54. There's the block and now the bucket. And watch this finish. Look at the spin between two guys. There came Childs for the block and just not able to get it. That was pretty. All right, partner, how long can you go with Filowich with four fouls on your bench, tied at 54, 8.30 to play? Man, He's been a, such a big uh, part of this game. I'm not bringing him back, probably, and unless the game gets away from me, six points, seven points, probably I'm going to try and get by myself four minutes. Three up, and you talked about it. That's Mast. He loves to shoot it from the left side. He does it again. That's his third three. Now, don't forget, we have not seen Lance Jones in eons. I don't know if he's injured because he was their offense in the first half. And three threes. There's Harvey head of the key. Harvey. Got a seam finished at the goal with the left hand. Boy, he took Childs to the basket. He does a great job there of protecting the ball. Shot blocker can't get there, and then he uses the backboard. Lead at one for the Braves. Ooh, he had a backdoor and missed him. Now it's in the hands of Terry Nolan Jr. And he got it back. Didn't matter anyway. He loves taking it to the Yes, he does. Three-point lead for Bradley. Look underneath and couldn't finish. Going yeah. to the line. And a couple of free throws coming up. They'll get right masked with the body. Good one here in Peoria. 59-56. It begins here with the 31st chapter of Arch Madness in downtown St. Louis. Stay with your team and watch as 10 Valley schools look to capture the league's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Conveniently located, there are attractions like the Gateway Arch in Ballpark Village, the team properties plus the tournament headquarters and other Arch Madness hotels offer valley rates to fans wishing to follow their schools all the way to the MDC championship title.
rooms at these properties for Arch Madness. Or for your next trip to St. Louis, call 1-800-916-0041 or visit ExploreStLouis.com. Dear parents, we know life can get crazy. Sometimes that's our fault. Sorry. But can we take a time out for a second and think about how awesome play is? This thing we love to do just because it's fun is actually helping us grow in all kinds of ways. It teaches us to think, to play nicely with others, to use our imagination, to practice being grown-ups, having tea, and to be creative. And the only trick to getting all that stuff is to play in all kinds of different ways. Because different kinds of play give us different kinds of skills. Help us mix up the ways we play. By the way, you're doing a great job with everything. Love, kids. Our next MVC TV Network production, a presentation of Live by Low St. Louis, will be tomorrow, Super Bowl Sunday. Northern Iowa will play host to the Indiana State Sycamores, and coverage begins at 3 Central. Want to experience laid-back luxury in the heart of downtown St. Louis, adjacent to Ballpark Village? Visit LiveByLowsHotels.com slash St. Louis, Missouri, to book your hotel room today. Good one here, 59-56. Bradley with the lead over Southern Illinois with 7.23 to go. To your point earlier, Lance Jones, we have not seen a lot from him in the second half for Southern Illinois. Three threes in the first half. He was a lot of their offense, and now he's back in there with 7.23 to play. 12 points, 4-5 or five total in this game in 20 minutes of play. We'll see what kind of difference he makes now down the stretch. Yeah, he hit that, you know, bomb of a three before the buzzer in the first half. I'm talking, what was that, 35 feet? Yeah. And he is an outstanding shooter, 44% from beyond the arc, if you count today's stats. And for whatever reason, hasn't scored in the second half, and we haven't seen a lot of him. So let's see what he does here now. So Jacoby Long hit both free throws. He checks out. Filowich is still on the bench for the Salukis. At the head of the key it goes. This is Childs and hands it off. Nolan. Now the three up from the right side off the backboard. The top of it after the miss. And it's back to Southern Illinois. So the Salukis a chance to take the lead here. Free throws a big difference in this game. Bradley 13 of 13. The Salukis 6 of 11. There's Jones. Now to the corner. For blanking. Oh, and they throw it away. So every time that they're close to tie or take a lead, you see that costly turnover. Yeah, you feel like the little engine that could, you come up the hill and you slide back. That's what we've seen. I remember we were playing in a championship game, a uh, semifinal game of a conference tournament. And it was, we were a big favorite, and it was that, what do you mean we're eight down? All right, we got it to seven, we got the ball. Turn it over. And it, it was that kind of game, and we ended up losing by two. It's like, really? It happens. It happens. Verplankin called for the foul. Again, the Braves have been perfect from the line. Kevin Einan is at the line, and it's the first. So perfection from the line for Bradley, 14 of 14 so far. Two-point lead. He is an 86% free throw shooter. <laughs> Got them both. 15 of 15 now. Yes, sir. Pretty, pretty unbelievable. Yep. That's really your difference in the game. Getting to the line and then making. Here's where Blanket thought about the three. 
put on the floor. Ooh, he thought about the three. Jones thought about it as well. Little ball fake. He's hit the face, but no call. Jones, quick move. Boy, they had two looks for three, and they passed him up, partner. They did. I thought Jones had a quicker look. He had to be, I mean, catch and go. By the time you wait, you let that defender get another step closer. Jones coming out again. Maybe going to the medical team as well as he was hit in the face. Says he's all right, so no. That just takes a seat. Yep, Banks is back in. Are you surprised at that? He's not been a factor here in the second half. Finishing at the rim, Terry Nolan Jr. Back to a five-point lead. Terry Nolan is just such a spark. Five and a half to play. For Plankin for three. No. This becomes a big possession here. Does. All of a sudden you get a three here, you get a bucket, you're seven or eight points up. Childs. Foul. Let's go back to Nolan. Terry Nolan, just a real heady player. Childs hands it to him. He's got a little coral move. They probably could have called the foul as he got bumped at the free throw line, but plays through it, takes it to the backboard and lays it in. Elijah Childs, the senior out of Kansas City. I like the basketball ink on Kingsby. You see that? A really nice basketball on his shoulder. I like ink. It's it's 16 of 16 now for the Braves. That's amazing. Child's a leading scorer coming into play. His season average 15, and he's now got 15, and that's their first miss. Nolan, the leading scorer for Bradley in this game. He's got 18, leading scorer for Southern Illinois. For Plank with 13. Jones has 12, all on threes. He's back in the game. Inside. Looking for help. It's Filowich back in the game under five to play. Spinning, and that'll be a foul on the floor. And spinning there was Ben Harvey drawing that contact. Would you like to see the continuation like in the NBA no. come to college? No, no. I know you're an NBA guy from an NBA city. I keep it like it is. I wouldn't mind it. Three up, deep one, got it. They needed that, Trent Brown. Big. All of a sudden, it's back to a one possession game. 64-61. Can they answer with a three? And they do. Harry Nolan. What a game he's had. Now at 21. Under four and a half to play. Lead at six. As the Braves trying to snap their six game losing skid. Jones hangs in the air and he'll shoot a pair. Almost got that to fall. Go back and watch these threes. We're just watching a three ball fest. And there's the handoff, square, really nice job not to commit an offensive foul on the screen. And then Terry Nolan, catch and go. That's when you don't have a lot of daylight and you're ready to shoot it, hits your hands and you're elevating. That's what Terry Nolan just did. Partner, we have had 41 combined three-point attempts. And so far in this game, we've had 20 makes. Not bad at Pretty all. Good. Yep. Can you imagine if when the late, great Pete Maravich was playing the oh. three ball? He already demolished most scoring records at the time. But if you, no include, three ball. Right, if you include the three ball, it would have been unbelievable. Incredible. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
They hand it off, gets it back. That's Kent, and he hits a three. And all of a sudden, it's back to a seven-point game. Just like we were talking about. The little engine could coming up the hill. Can I get there? Oh, slides all the way back down. It was Jason Kent. I haven't seen a lot of him. The freshman out of Oak Forest, Illinois. Only averages three a game, and so he's matched that. They need a bucket, so they go to Filowich. He spins inside, and it did everything but go down, and he'll shoot a pair. He's not a good free throw shooter, only 47%. With that, we step aside. It's a seven-point lead for Bradley. Trying to go to 500 with a win today. 322 to play. At Curry Hotels, we know life on the road can be hard. But we're here to make the journey easier. With over 150 locations, our friendly team members and generous free amenities, like Wi-Fi, hot breakfast, 5.30 kickback featuring hot food and cold beverages help brighten your day and make your time away from home easier, allowing you to travel happy. The Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Championship returns to the Quad Cities this March. Watch as 10 Valley teams try to punch their ticket for the NCAA Tournament. The 2021 edition of Hoops in the Heartland tips off March 11 through 14th at Tax Slayer Center in downtown Moline. Visit mbcquadcities.com or download the Hoops in the Heartland app for more information. Since 1907, the Valley runs deep. Tonight's MDC Famous Alumni is Southern Illinois' Steve Finley, a native of Paducah, Kentucky. Finley was a first-team All-Missouri Valley Conference choice in 1986 and 1987, and a third-team All-American selection in 1986. Throughout his 19-year Major League Baseball career, he was a two-time All-Star selection, a five-time Gold Glove Award winner, and a World Series champion with Arizona in 2001. He was inducted into the MDC Athletics Hall of Fame in 2014. to play. Dan McLaughlin alongside of David Kaplan. But it's been an entertaining game. And what's hard to believe is that if you're a fan of the Salukis and you're saying, well, Southern Illinois here in the second half, our guys are shooting it pretty well. Well, they're shooting it to the tune of 69% to the floor in the second half, and yet they're trailing by seven. All right, if you said to Brian Mullins, I know you started slow, one of ten. Guess what? Second half, at the 322 mark, you'll be shooting 69%. He would have thought, we're good. Yeah, we're going to be fine. And by the way, um, hey, coach, you're going to have 11 threes, 11 of 20. We'll take that. That's over 50%. Sign me up. Yeah. And yet, here they are, trailing. But that helps. Filowich, 47% on the year from the free throw line. He's had a nice game, nine points, nine boards. One of two for the free throw line. Just over three minutes to play. Kingsby with it. Good steal by Jones. Beautiful steal. Foul coming up. Second time in this game he's been hit in the face, and now a stoppage with 304. He just gets up in the passing lane. It's just a guy who's reading it. He gets up, gets a hand on it, and then let's see where the fall comes. There's the hack across the arm. He's still not at the free throw line yet. It's a 77% free throw shooter. As a team, they shoot 70%. I think you're right. I think it's... It might have been his own hand that flew up after he got hit. I think it hit him right in his, in his eye. 
They're now 10 of 16 from the free throw line. Cuts a lead to five, trying to make it four here with a bank. He's just a sophomore. I mean, you can tell he's been player. in the weight room. Yeah. Tough kid. One of two. So one for two for the free throw line. On the other side, that's been a difference maker. 16 for 17. Bradley from the free throw line. Hit out of bounds and it will stay with the Braves. Here comes Rashawn Henry. He's got four fouls. He just has to play smart. Deep three. No good. No second chance opportunity. The rebound by Banks as he elevated. The 6'2 freshman ripped it away. Big possession here. Five point lead. Two and a half to play. Jones gets a pick. They're trying to go inside. They do. Double there. There's the cut. And is it goaltending? Nope. They need a foul, I believe. You can see that far sideline. They want to say it's goaltending, but they're not getting that call. Brian Ward has his hands up going, are you kidding? If it's not goaltending, why is it uh, called a foul? He's saying that should be a clean block. Let's take a look again. There's the pass off the cut. Yeah, there is a foul from the back side. Absolutely. Good call. That's why they pay those guys the big bucks. For Plankin hit the first. 70-66 and can't get that one to drop. So free throws plaguing now the Salukis here down the stretch. Uh, you missed the last tour. It's a two-point ball game. 11 of 19 from the free throw line. You know, despite with some foul troubles, Bradley only has a two-point edge on points in the paint. His child's elevates, missed it. Yeah, he it was in his hands too long. If you're going to shoot it, shoot it. He hesitated, hesitated, hesitated. The fourth time, he finally put it up and just didn't have a real good angle to shoot the ball. Nice look by Jones, who slips, gets help. That was Banks. 140 to play, 10 on the shot clock. There's Jones in the lane, lost it, ball on the floor. Salukis have it, down to three on the shot clock, and they lost it again. And a timeout taken, 127 to play, and the lead of four, possession with Bradley. That is a really good timeout by Brian Wardle. Both teams a little scattered there, and he went, this is a huge possession. I got timeouts in my holster. I'm using them. Let's calm it down. Talk about this possession. Let's turn now to our players of the game. A presentation of State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, Lance Jones, we highlighted him in the open. Four for five from beyond the arc. And then Terry Nolan Jr., that's an easy pick. He's been phenomenal. Three threes, seven of ten from the floor. It just keeps grinding. He just plays hard. That was a costly turnover for Southern Illinois. They're tenth. There's nine for Bradley. 127 to play. Daniel, you made the astute point about free throws. Here's the other stat that is killing Brian Mullins' club here. Zero offensive rebounds in the second half. Zero. Mm. The look underneath and they lost it. Boy, that could have been a bunny and maybe the game if they get that. Instead, off the fingertips of Childs and back to the Shalukis. In this all-important possession with 113 to play. He'll let it roll. Picks it up, Jones, and just over a minute to go. Don't need a three unless it's in the flow of your offense. A good shot. Attack. Lengthen the game. That is the key, is lengthening the game. Verplanken picked up his dribble. And now a whistle away from the basketball, looks like. And a timeout was taken, and I'm not sure that's the right call because Trent Brown was right there and open, had a good look. He did, but when you're already asking for the timeout, yeah. you're not seeing that play coming. Nope. 
So the leading score in the ball game is Nolan for Bradley. He's got 21. There are two in double figures for the Bradley Braves. Nolan with 21, Childs with 15. Jones has 15 for Southern Illinois. Blanket has 14 for Southern Illinois. 70 66 are scored, 55.2 seconds left. Take me in that huddle right there. Well, I'm going to take you inside that huddle because he wants, they got plenty of time. They got 12 seconds on the shot clock. He wants the ball to go inside out. If we go inside, guys, if we've got a good opportunity, score it. A three doesn't tie the game. You want to, in these situations, not panic. Lengthen the game. Bradley's going to extend their defense and try to take that three-point ball away. Let's attack inside. Maybe you get the old-fashioned three-point play. At the very least, you get a bucket. Jones got it blocked. Great block. And that was Childs with his third block. He now is 26 on the year. They get the steal. They've got numbers. Takes it right at him. Couldn't finish. The follow, no good. That's blocked out of play with 34.5 to go. Oh, I don't know if they review this. That was close to going off of SIU. They're not going to. For Blanken, Jones, can't take that much time. It's two possession. They got to go. Under 30 seconds. Jones with it. Deep three. No. Loose rebound, Childs. And they've got a foul. And they do. 17.6 seconds to play. Yeah, I would have... If I was Jones, take it to the basket again. Get it to a two-point game, lengthen the game, because now if they hit the free throws, now you have to take the three because it's a two-possession game. It goes to 72-66. But if they miss here, take the ball to the basket. Bradley hasn't scored in three and a half minutes. McAdoo from the free throw line this year is four for five and now five is six. Valley will be in action tomorrow. Our friend Jordan Burnfield will be on the call for Loyola and Evansville. Evansville tomorrow. So see if the Ramblers keep it rolling at home. So it's a six point lead, 17.6 seconds remain. Now you got to think three because it's a two-possession game at six. And these two teams will hook up tomorrow. You can see the game on ESPN 3. And that'll be at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. I always find it interesting, too, with these back-to-backs, the adjustments that the coaches make in less than 24 hours, too. That's been interesting. They do. You go back to the hotel. It's not like you can go anywhere. And... You eat as a team, you keep everyone as safe as is humanly possible, and you just watch tape. Guys, why did we do this? Guys, let's try more of that. You try and make an adjustment. And you, you know, if you're Brian Mullins, guys, we can't start one of ten tomorrow. We got to keep going, and we got to be better on the offensive glass. If you're Brian Wardle, guys, we can't keep getting a seven-point lead, giving it back. Get another lead, give it back. Let's see if they can hang on and extend this one here and snap a six-game losing skid. So both huddles very quickly. What are you doing in the final 17 seconds here? Well, look, it's a six-point game. I got to come down. I got to toss it inside, kick it back out, and get myself the best possible three I can get. But you can't just take one to take one. But you got to score fairly quickly. And then you got to foul immediately. Yep. Give it one pass for a steal and then foul. And I think you also look at if you say, what's the difference in this game? Three points shooting, obviously, but free throw shooting. Free throw 19. Brown that three, that's no good. Rebound in the hands of Bradley, and it looks like they're going to win this one. Terry Nolan Jr. with the rebound. He's a 79% free throw shooter, 9.3 seconds remaining. If he makes one, it's three possession, and then this game is over. Correct. It's just, that was a tough three. It was contested. But, you know, you're down to what we like to call gamble situation, where, guys, we got to gamble. we got to take a shot here. Back, 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 back. 
But a lot of fun working with you, my man. Always fun being with you, David. I always enjoy it. We've got a long history. Two shot. Two shot. Well, they let him shoot it, but the fire official had said, no, 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 don't let him go, but he did go, but they don't count it. And again, as you said, these two will rematch tomorrow on ESPN3. Your dear friend Tom Ackerman will be down here. Yep. And I think Rich Zavosik, who I called games when he was the coach at Missouri, Kansas City. We both did. We did. We flew to KC. Hit them both, and they should not foul here. What are they at the line now? 17 to 17. They've had one miss. 17 of 18. Check that. 18, 18 of 19 from the free throw line, partner. 18 of 19 in this game. Pretty amazing. And on the other side, 11 of 19. So when you look at free throw shooting, that's one of the things that's got to change in the game two of this series tomorrow. So that's going to be it. Bradley's going to hold on. They're going to win this game hard fought, and they're going to snap their six-game losing skin. Partner, fun being with you. You too. I look forward to it again. Bradley snaps their six-game losing skid as they defeat Southern Illinois by the final of 74 to 66. Our next Missouri Valley Conference game of the week will be tomorrow, and that is Super Bowl Sunday. Northern Iowa will play host to the Indiana State Sycamores, and our coverage begins at 3 Central. For our entire crew, for David Kaplan, I'm Dan McLaughlin. As always, thanks for being with us. The difference in this game, some big threes, and we saw plenty of threes in this game. Southern Illinois, three-point territory, 11 of 22. Bradley, 10 of 23, but free throw shooting, 18 of 19 in this game for the Bradley Braves. And with the win, they're back to 500. They go to 10 of 10. 4-7 in the Valley, the loss for the Salukis. They are now 8-7 overall and 2-7 and seven in the Valley. For Dave, I'm Dan, so long. Jake from